I'm holding 144 diamond blocks that I want to use to construct a very large house for myself because I am the king of this village and the king deserves the biggest possible house. Now, when I say the biggest, I don't mean the tallest and I don't mean the thickest. I mean, it has to have the biggest possible volume on the inside because I have a bunch of these paintings and item frames that I want to place in it and I need the most amount of space. Now to do that, I could obviously copy one of these designs or I could do a little bit of math and figure it out using calculus and quadratic equations. Welcome to What The Math. Today we're going to be using Minecraft to do a little bit of mathematics. And so let's start with a little bit of math here. And we're going to start with assuming that we have 144 diamond blocks. Uh, it doesn't have to be diamond. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be 144. But I chose this number because it's a little bit easier to calculate. And we're trying to basically build ourselves a house or just say it's going to be just a, a rectangular house with no roof or anything like that that uh, has the highest possible volume on the inside so we're going to write that right here maximum volume out of those 144 blocks we have to try to figure this out so one of the easier ways of doing this is to make an assumption that let's just say we're going to have on the bottom here we're just going to have a square in other words, our foundation or our base is going to be square base and it's a square that has uh, a set number of squares on both sides. So both of these are going to be both of these sides are going to be equal. So um, and then we're obviously going to have some sort of a height here that will produce walls for us and will then turn this into a house. So in other words, we actually have several different variables here. We have our variable x, which is going to be our height. So x here is going to represent height. And then we have our variable y right here, which is going to represent the length and the width of the house. Now, it might not be the best to have a square foundation, a square base, but for the, just for the simplicity's sakes, we're going to start with a square foundation. So here, length and width are y. So this is y, this is y, and this right here is x. And to start our calculation, let's just uh, assume that we're going to place our 144 blocks in a square shape just so we can start with a foundation. In other words, we're going to have uh, 144 squares lying like this in the square form. And so here we go. This is what we get if we lay them out like this. And this is basically 12 by 12 because uh, this is actually why I picked 144 because 12 times 12 is 144. So basically you can find this by taking a square root of 144 and you'll get this sort of a shape. All right, so that's a good start. So this is actually 144 diamonds or bl uh, diamond blocks. And to turn this into a house, we're going to cut out these little squares like this. And what we're going to do next is basically build a, a box. We're essentially just building a box out of this. So we're going to cut these out and then fold right here to make walls. So right here, we're going to have these little folds to turn this into a box. In other words, here's one example. I'm going to take out uh, squares of about a size of about three by three, and this will give me a shape that looks like this. Now, these parts right here are going to be our walls. We're basically just going to fold them up now and place them on uh, on top of this. Now, now, remember, this is actually upside down. So this part will be actually our roof once we flip it over uh, because we don't really need the floor, right? We, we can live without it. Uh, so we, we're just going to have sand as our floor and then this will be our roof and these are actually our walls. And so here's one of them that has been just folded uh, over and it gives us a wall that's about six long and three high. So if we were to do this for all of these, it would give me a shape like this. And now obviously, once again, this is upside down. So all I have to do now is remove these and turn them into a roof. Uh, but basically, this is what uh, our first creation is like. But is this the uh, maximum volume? Will I actually have the most amount of space for me to place my paintings here? So if I were to start placing paintings, will this be the maximum volume? And unfortunately, the answer is not. This is not the highest volume. So in other words, I can build a house that will allow me to put even more paintings by changing the uh, dimensions a little bit. So let's find out what would be the perfect size here. We're going to do this by graphing first, and then I'm going to show you how to do this manually using calculus. Now let's start with the equation that we can use first. And so here we're going to be talking about these little squares that we cut out. And we, we know that the height, as we mentioned before, is actually x. So both of these are x. 
the total length of that one side uh, if you remember this was actually 12. now what we can do is now we can rewrite this whole side as this we can rewrite this as 12 minus 2x so because this is 12 and this is x and x this uh this whole side and this side I, uh, right here that i'm talking about this side will be 12 minus 2x in a similar fashion this other side will also be 12 minus 2x because we're actually using a square so we can now write side 2 is also 12 minus 2x and side number 3 is our height and if you remember the height here is just x now what do we need to find volume well that's easy side 1 times side 2 times side 3 and obviously this will give us let's just write this in a somewhat easier way to read so it's going to be give us give us height multiplied by first side multiplied by the second side and that's volume and we can actually rewrite this now in a slightly easier to read format of x multiplied by 12 minus 2x and all of this is squared and this right here is our volume for this shape now we're looking for uh, the, the highest possible volume with a certain X. Now, how do we do this? Well, the easiest way is to obviously graph it. And to graph this, I'm going to be using Desmos, uh, Desmos calculator. It's absolutely free. You can find it on desmos.com. And here I'm going to launch it and let's just type this in. So X multiplied by 12 minus 2X. And we're going to have squares on the outside. And here we go. So this is our function. And all we need to do now is uh, let's just remove this for a second. And we're basically looking at a graph that is known as a cubic graph. And this graph has a very interesting shape. It's sort of like an S shaped. And specifically in this particular graph, we're looking for uh, what's called a, a local maximum. So what you need to do is you need to scroll up until you find this right here this little peak right here because this part will not never actually end this other part will also never end the part on the bottom is not really important because it just shows us when um volume is zero but we're actually looking for the highest volume and the highest volume is at this point right here because this this represents volume x here represents the the height the x that we used before and so if you click on this it will give you the answer and the answer here is two and the volume that you'll have at, at uh, the value of 2 is 128. So if I write 2 here, uh, this is 2 and this is 2, then this will give us the highest possible volume. And, that, and this, of course, is 12 minus 2 times 2. So this would be 12 minus 4 or 8. And this will also be 8. So what we're looking to create here is a house with the height of 2 and the side of 8 and 8. And so this would give you the perfect volume for this particular amount of blocks. And here we go. This is what they would actually look like. And there's unfortunately no door, so we may have to make one. The inside of this little house has a volume of 128 uh, cubes, or I guess Minecraft uh, squares, Minecraft cubes. And, ooh, look at spiders. And we can basically place as many paintings now as we want. This will give us highest volume. And on top of that, because we cut out those little squares, because we actually cut out uh, four, four little squares, um, four little squares from each side, this also means that we now have 16 more diamond blocks to spare and to use for something else. We can actually maybe build a barn or possibly use these for some other uh, interesting construction. Now this is uh, how you would do this using graphing, but let me show you also how to do this uh, using just algebra and calculus, so basically calculating it manually using your hands. And to do this manually, we're going to go back to this formula right here, and uh, we're now going to expand it by using uh, foiling, and uh, we're going to basically cross multiply these two brackets what uh, this will give us is this so here if you remember how to foil and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it relatively quickly but if you don't remember which one of the previous videos I posted on how to foil so here multiplying these uh, things four times I'm going to cross multiply them to get the following this will give us X multiplied by 144 uh, minus 48 X and then plus 4x squared. 
And the last way, let's multiply everything by that x outside, and this will give us 144x minus 48x squared plus 4x cubed. So this is what we have, this is the actual function, and this is what we graphed before. Now, what is a calculus and what is it for? Well, calculus in essence is to basically find rates of changes or or how fast things change in relation to something else. Now here, what we want to do is this. We want to find uh, this point right here when things are no longer changing. They're actually uh, at zero. In other words, at this point right here, things are stationary. This is called a stationary point because uh, on this point, for example, we can see that it's still kind of increasing. Here it's decreasing, but here it's absolutely zero. So this is actually when uh, nothing is changing. So what we want to find now is we want to find that one point when uh, nothing changes anymore. So we're going to be looking for the stationary point. And to do this, we need to find what's called a derivative or um, what we're doing is we're differentiating this function. We're going to call it y prime. And this is how this works. So I'm going to write this little rule here for calculus. This is a calculus rule. And the rule works like this. For every value, we're going to put our exponent, original exponent in front of the number. We're going to then take our x and reduce this exponent by 1. Now, this is a calculus rule that you will either study in high school or has have already studied and possibly forgot. And uh, anyway, so this is the rule. It's re relatively simple. So basically what this means is the exponent here is 1. The exponent here is 2. The exponent here is 3. So we're going to put these exponents in front first. So here it's just going to be 1. And uh, then we're going to reduce this exponent by 1. So this will turn into 0. This will turn into 1. And this will turn into 2. And so what this function will now become is this. It's going to become 144 minus 2 times 48 is 96 minus 96. And then it's going to lose its 1 power and become just x. And finally, uh, 3 goes in front, becomes 12, plus 12, then loses its power, becomes x squared. Now, this is what we would call in calculus a, a differentiated function or a derivative of a function. What does this represent? Well, this represents the actual graph for rates of change. Now, we don't really need to, need to graph this. All we need to do now is find this one stationary point. And like I said before, stationary point is when uh, the actual rate of change is zero. So we're going to turn this into this. It go it's going to be equal to zero. So I'm going to rewrite this right below. 12x squared minus 96x plus 144 equals to zero and this is a quadratic function this is something uh, you may have done in grade eight or grade nine and to solve this we can do two things one of those things is factoring and one of those things is using a quadratic formula which i'm going to do right now let's actually use this little spot right here to write the quadratic formula and the quadratic formula goes like this x equals and there's going to be always two values of x for quadratic formulas it equals to minus b and b here is this middle number this is b and it's uh, minus b so in this case because this is already minus is going to be just 96 plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac this is a and this is C. So that's kind of like how we try to solve these quadratic formulas. And then all of this will be divided by 2A. So let me just erase some of the stuff so we can actually do this. Now, to make this even more simpler, I can actually divide everything by 12 here. And this is something we can do because we're basically dividing everything by 12, including 0. To get this, we're going to get x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals to 0. And so let's use the quadratic function now, and it's going to be minus b, so that's 8, plus minus, and that's because we're going to get two values. Uh, b squared is 64, 4 ac is 4 times 1, which is 4, times this, which is 12. In other words, it's minus uh, 12 times 4, which is 48, and then all of this divided by 2. And so now, if we actually try to simplify this middle part, we'll get 8 plus minus square root of 16 divided by 2. And this can be now rewritten like this. x1, this is our first value, is going to be 8 plus square root of 16 is 4. 8 plus 4 divided by 2. And x2, this is the minus part, will be 8 minus 4 divided by 2. So first value is 
8 plus 4 is 12 divided by 2 is 6. Second value is 8 minus 4 is 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now, so we have two answers, 6 and 2. Now, we have to go back to the original uh, picture and try to see if any of these values don't fit. So here, uh, this was how we found one of the sides. If this side is 6 and we put 6 in here, this will actually give us 0. And it cannot be 0, so we cannot use this value because it will give us 0. But 2 will not give us 0. 2 will actually give us 8. So, And that's what the answer is. So the answer is 2 um, for, for the height and 8 for the sides. And so basically, this is how you would solve this using calculus, using quadratic equations. Uh, and hopefully this was kind of clear. In other words, next time you're building something in games like Minecraft and you want to optimize your volume and find the best possible volume for a certain shape, you may want to do some calculus. And in the next video or one of the future videos, we're going to do the same in a game called From the Depths. And I'm going to show you how to construct an optimally sized uh, ship as well, using a very similar principle to this. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. And game you later, I'm going to try to make my house a little bit more comforting and a little bit more beautiful. Thank you and bye. Bye-bye.